Over the past two years, the West Davis Corridor Environmental Impact Study Team has collected and analyzed information from all over Western Davis and Weber County. Part of that effort has included studying wetlands. This video will help explain what wetlands are, why they are important, and how our team has studied them over the course of this project, and how they have influenced the location of the alternatives. Wetlands are an important natural resource and are federally protected by the Clean Water Act. Besides being a beautiful part of the natural environment, wetlands act as flood control and water storage, as well as a filter to help remove harmful contaminants from agricultural runoff, surface water, and groundwater. In addition, they serve as habitat for a wide variety of wildlife. The term wetland can be confusing because it does not simply mean land that is wet. To be a wetland, an area must have all of these characteristics. Water. Water must be present at or near the surface for at least part of the growing season. Wetland scientists use the term hydrology when evaluating the prevalence of water. Soils. Soils must be saturated long enough during the growing season to limit the amount of oxygen available to plants. The types of soil that support this state of saturation are called hydric soils. Vegetation. Only certain kinds of plants can thrive in an environment that is frequently flooded and lacks oxygen. The presence of these hydrophytic plants indicates the possible existence of a wetland. The amount of water, the kind of soil, and the types of plants can vary, but a certain combination of all three must be present in order for an area to be classified as a wetland. In order to designate wetlands, scientists throughout the United States use the same set of rules, which are found in the 1987 Corps of Engineers Wetlands Delineation Manual and Regional Supplements. These manuals are recognized as the current authority on wetlands identification by both the Environmental Protection Agency and the Corps. Under Section 404 of the Clean Water Act, any action that places fill materials into wetlands, such as building a new roadway, requires a permit from the Army Corps of Engineers. In order to obtain this permit, agencies must show that they have first tried to avoid impacting wetlands. If the impact can't be avoided, then they must demonstrate that the impact has been minimized as much as possible. All remaining impacts must then be mitigated once they have been shown to be unavoidable. Because wetlands are a federally protected resource that must be avoided where possible, the West Davis Corridor EIS study has included a series of wetland surveys to determine where wetlands are located. The first survey our team conducted was done at the beginning of the study in the spring of 2010 and looked at the entire study area from Parrish Lane in Centerville all the way up to 12th Street in Ogden. Because the study area was so large, wetland vegetation and hydrology were used to define potential wetland areas. This is the standard practice around the country for large environmental studies. Once this initial wetland survey was complete, our team was able to proceed with alternatives development. In February 2011, we had narrowed down the alternatives to three, and we shared these alternatives with the public. Many questions arose about the wetland areas we were showing on our maps. Our team was asked to look more closely at several specific areas of concern. That spring, our biologists were sent again into the field to look more closely at these certain areas. This survey was similar to what was done in 2010, looking at hydrology and vegetation. However, we were able to focus more closely on areas near the alternatives. The 2011 wetland survey found that in some areas there were more wetlands than we had estimated the previous year. In other areas, there were less. 
These variations occurred because our biologists were able to look more closely in areas around our alternative alignments and not just a general assessment of the entire study area. It was because of those changes in wetland area that we took another look at the alternatives to see where we could make some shifts to further minimize impacts, not only to the wetlands, but also to homes and farmland. One of the areas where we estimated less wetlands was in West Kaysville. Because our new survey data showed less wetlands west of the power lines in this area than we had previously estimated, we were able to shift the alignment moving it to the west side of the power corridor. This shift allowed us to avoid directly impacting 17 homes in the West Kaysville area. In Syracuse, the data showed more wetlands than we had previously estimated. This increase opened up some new refinements to Alternative B in Syracuse. We ended up making a shift to Alternative B that had similar wetland and home impacts but saved approximately 40 acres of prime and unique farmland. After our refinements were released, questions were still raised about the wetland survey work. Remember that at that time, the wetland data was based on only two of the three factors that classify a wetland, hydrology and vegetation. Knowing how critical it was to be certain on the wetland locations, and with the help of additional funding, the West Davis Corridor team decided to look at the third factor in determining a wetland, the soil. In the spring of 2012, our biologists once again went into the field to assess the wetland areas. But this time they were identifying any areas with hydric soil. In doing so, the biologists dug over 500 test holes to evaluate the hydric properties of the soils in the area. Through these efforts, it was discovered that many of the areas previously determined to be wetlands did not contain the hydric soil qualities to be considered a wetland. Our biologists also studied the source of any present water to determine whether it was natural or coming from somewhere else, such as irrigation runoff. The new revised wetland data is now complete because it includes all three factors that make up a wetland, hydrology, vegetation, and soils. The soil component has proved to be very crucial in the West Davis Corridor study area since seasonal and irrigation changes can cause yearly fluctuations in hydrology and vegetation. But it takes several years for a soil to develop hydric properties. So even though 2012 has been a dry year, it would not cause changes in the hydric properties of the soil. With the new wetland data, the West Davis Corridor team has been able to make shifts to the alternatives to further minimize impacts. These alignment changes are available on the project website. The project team will now need to incorporate these new shifts and wetland information into the Draft Environmental Impact Statement, or DEIS, which will require additional time. With these new changes, we anticipate that the DEIS will be released for public review in spring of 2013. It's important to remember that no final decisions have been made on an alternative. In fact, a final decision will not be made until the study is complete and a final record of decision is approved by the Federal Highway Administration in 2014. All of our wetland study information can be found at www.udot.utah.gov slash West Davis under the documentation page. Just click on the wetlands tab to view all our wetlands documentation. Got a question? Feel free to contact a member of the public information team by calling the project hotline at 877-298-1991 or send us an email at westdavis at utah.gov.